speak at a lot of different user group meetings. It's a lot of fun. We get into a lot of good topics. One of the more popular ones is the concept of Excel files because we need Excel files to get data in that doesn't already exist. And where it often comes into play is you'll get a, a data warehouse or data, data mark guy that says, well, you know, you don't need to be doing Excel. Everything you need is in, in the databases. Well, the databases might be financial data that captures actual, but how do you do projections? That ain't there. That ain't going to work. So what do you do? You create an Excel spreadsheet and can bring the data in. And it works fantastic. A lot of people didn't realize it was first introduced in version 4.1. It's an amazing feature. Uh, working as well as I have now the last three years, both of our organizations have developed a great relationship with the de developers, and Samuel and Gregory and some of the others. And um, uh, so we get to talk to them about it. One of the first things that came out with Excel files, they didn't realize what a hit it would be. There were two or three other showstoppers before one also. So the problem was when they first introduced it, we got in there early, my staff and I, and we discovered it's a great way to bring it in, but God forbid you need to update that file. Because the moment you updated that Excel file, it was a defunct report, it was done. So you got in the business of recreating reports all the time every, every time you updated the Excel file, all right? I was just presenting to a, a local company up in Phoenix a couple days ago, I did, did a What's New in 4.2 demo for them. And one of their senior power users is up there he says, I get questions all the time about broken reports and I can't figure out how they're doing it. And I said, seriously? So I'm going to show you the typical scenario for Excel files in order to use them as a data source. It can be an exclusive. I have a customer in Cincinnati, Fifth Third Bank, and I've got customers that use nothing but 6, 8, 10, 12 Excel files. They bring each individual sheets and separate queries. They bring them and merge them all in. I don't have to do the Excel magic of squeezing it into a physical single block and whatever else. And it makes life really, really easy. So we'll show you how to, how to bring them in and how to update them and how to manage it. There's a very effective way to do it so that it doesn't break it. And the gentleman the other day said that one single point was worth the whole time for I did a two-hour demo. Just for that one single point, he said, I've gotten so many questions in the last three, six, nine months, and I can only wave my hands and say, I have no clue why your reports are breaking along the way. All right. So Excel files is a really, really awesome feature. Uh, so the problem you have, let me get into Webby here real quick and get us logged in. And get started in here. Excel files, by their very definition, have to be created outside of Webby and maintained outside of Webby. Do not, do not bring them in and start editing it inside the window. That's number one way to break the report. There's only so many undos you can do and how many cancels you can do to close out your report and start all over. And you don't want to keep doing that over and over and over and over again. All right. So with Excel files, the first order of business is you create it outside of Webby. All right, as a physical file. It doesn't matter where it is. It can be a thumb drive be a server. It can be anywhere you want to put it. It doesn't matter. Just make sure it's in the same spot every time you refresh that document or go into work with that document because it's got to be able to find the Excel file itself. When you update an Excel file, that is also done external to web. And then you bring it in. But you do it a different way. It's when you're bringing in something new, there's one path to follow. It's very easy. So when you update it, you do it a different path. All very easy, very straightforward, very much laid out for you as well. By the way, I have a one of about, we have about 25, 30 best practice guides we do in all of our training classes for Webby. They're awesome, specific, detailed guides. One of them's called Excelling at Webby. For anybody that's here that wants a copy, you've got to just drop me off a card or your email address. You'll get an electronic copy of this that you can share with your staff. It'll have everything you're going to do plus a lot extra. I don't have time to talk about other uses of Excel files. There's a lot of cool things you can do with Excel files. Filter file, create a single file filter file. Bring it as, as a report number one, bring in my primary query. For number two, do a, a where it could be customer ID in list, point to the first Excel file, dynamic filter file. Bridging gaps if you have incompatible objects where the months are defined differently and you're trying to merge. Obviously, 4.2 allows you to merge on local variables, but an Excel file serves as a bridge. Lots of good uses for that as well. So let me show you what I got here. In, in my documents tab, I have a file out here. Let's open up here in a minute. I have an Excel file out there, actually, under my favorites. I have one in a folder called Excel, subfolder. If you're going to start bringing in Excel files, you might want to manage them. You might want to stay from duplicate names. You'll notice I have one called eFashion. It's a simple Excel spreadsheet with three columns, quarter, month, and projected revenue. Easy for you to follow along with me. But I did something else. Under the basic reporting subfolder, I have one out there and a duplicate one. And if that isn't enough under my favorites, I believe I also have one out here called eFashion. That is not cool. Because now you come back and later on, which one am I updating it from? Which one's the current one? Am I using these in different places? You don't want to do what I just showed you here. And I did that on purpose. 
Problem number two, should you take the time to bring the Excel file in? Okay, no problem. And the rest of your department want to use it. And she said, well, just go out and get it. Forgetting that, where did you put it? Under my favorites. And who gets access to my favorites? Me. Now the rest of the people are all frustrated because they don't have the Excel file. Well, you just send it out. Now everybody imports it, and then everybody updates it later on. We got 20 million versions of that Excel file floating out there as well. How do we manage that? What you might want to think about doing is when you do import it, go to public folders, set up a subfolder category called Excel or, some, or maybe personal data files, so you can put text in there, and then manage it from there. Have somebody that kind of manages bringing them in and controls them, and we all point to one place, one single place to get that Excel file. And as long as it's all managed from there, it works out great as well. So you have all that flexibility, but along with flexibility comes the interesting question of which one am I using here right now? That's the old problem. So the way you would normally import it, let me go back to Excel. I've already done it, but we'll take you through the step process. New local document. I'm bringing in a local document. And by the way, I'm running 4.2 SP6 or 7. I have text files as well as Excel available to me. Either one are supported now. I would do the typical, this is the typical Microsoft-like import option. I would go to Browse. And I'm not going to go all the way out there. It's, it's actually out there on my thumb drive out here, and I'll be using it later on. So uh, let me make sure it's actually out there. Oh, I didn't bring my thumb drive for it. Hmm, left it back in the back there. So I'll get back to that one later on. So I would just import it there, do an add, and it would show up in the folder, as you see right there. So there's the Excel, under here, there's the Excel file where I'm importing. So now I want to use it. How do I use that file? Let's go out there and bring it in. So typical, by the way, if somebody going to grab in the chair in the very back, I have a little mini black thumb drive. They can just bring it up real quick. In my haste, I forgot, forgot about that. So. So we'll go to the home button. Let's click new. And by the way, make sure you're all running HTML and not Java. Take a huge step backwards. You want to be able to use whichever browser you want to use and along the other stuff that comes along with it. Uh, the infamous blue-gray screen to nowhere. I love this. When 4.0 first came out, that's what we got. Thank you. And that's what we had to figure out. What do we do from this point? Users to this day still suffer through that. Well, it's basically a new or an open. That's for all practical purposes. Those are the two primary things you're going to do. I wouldn't be opening it from here. Should have done that back off the Documents tab, but you can. It'll come up in View mode. You can edit it later on as well. We hit the New button. Notice I have some additional things that you may or may not, depending on service pack levels. I'm often the enemy of the IT department because I'll show people all these new features across the service pack levels, but you're not quite at that service pack level. So I'll eventually get a call from the IT department saying, thank you very much. And I've got all these people I rate pushing me to upgrade to the new features because you showed them all those features in your presentation. That's okay. It's good stuff, you know. We want to be able to get and take advantage of the new features as we go along. I'm going to get my thumb drive plugged in, just so I'm ready for the next step later on. So let's go ahead. We'll bring in the Excel file. Excel file, in order to use them, you better have them already imported. But as you know, I can stop right now. I can go back to the Home button. I can select New, and I can, or I can actually go out to the Documents tab in this case, and I go out and I import it, and then continue on where I left off. I would prefer getting all my Excel files imported into a particular folder where I can manage them, figure out what I'm going to use, and have them already sitting in the BI launch pad. The launch pad is really a holding tank, if you think about it. Physical files outside, the holding tank's where we bring it in to use it in our document. All right, so we'll pick Excel, but notice I have a text and some of the other options that are available. And we'll go open it up from wherever it is, and we'll pick the Excel file here, and we'll pick this one here. And we'll bring it up. So I brought in my Excel file. Now, Excel files got to be cleaned up. I also work quite a bit with a Tableau product as well. It has a data interpreter feature that allows you to take an Excel file that's not in true column form and clean up all the extra crap that you don't need. Webby doesn't have it. That's OK. We got to make sure that our Excel files are data silos. Title, first row is all titles, the data underneath each one. No columns, no headers, and other types of things other than the column titles and the data. So it's basically a collection of data. Clean it all up, make sure you're good to go. This is called the CDP. We used to call it the old PDP, personal data provider, for any old desk users. It's SAP's attempt, never ending attempt, to confuse the daylight of us by renaming things as they do all the time. And that happened here as well. Notice, first row contains column names. Yep, that's what we want. If there's multiple sheets, I can bring them in one at a time, add another query, and bring them in, and that's great. I want to manage the sheets as if they were separate queries so I can merge them all together and give dimensionality to them. That's a very good use for it. So I do an OK on it. Now what's going to come up, I call the pseudo query panel. From my definition, you can't have a true query panel because it's not a true universe. So, But it resembles it, as you see it here. Notice um, 
Uh, well, we have the data preview and we have our uh, objects up here. So let's just run that query as is. I'm always big on renaming query tabs. If you're using HTML, you have to right click rename. If you're reading the Java version, you can double click right on a query tab and change it. Reporting's different, but in here, okay. And you notice something funny happened. This is a very typical scenario when you bring in Excel files. One of the many little things that confuse you as you work with them. What's the problem? Hey, wait a minute, look at my months. I know my Excel spreadsheet had months one through 12 spread across the four quarters. What did it do? It merged them, it summed them up. It did an aggregate function, all right, which was correct. What happens is, and this goes back to the old Desky days, for those of us who remember the Desky product, when you would bring an Excel file, as you do in Webby now, it starts at column one and says dimension or measure, dimension or measure, each one. So it goes to the first column quarter. It's got a queue that took care of it right there. It's a dimension. It goes to column two. And it's jumping out, yippee, I can make it a measure. I don't have to do any more work. We're sitting back here going, don't do me any favors. And Webby says, oh, I already did it. It's too late now. Then you go to column three, projected revenue. So all we had to do is fix it. Now, the typical user will, again, panic and go, oh, geez. I got to go back out to the physical Excel file outside of the launch pad. I've got to update it. And then I got to figure out how to bring it in and replace it in, in, in when I bring it in as well. No, you don't. Webby said, let me, let me give you a one-stop shop. I'll take care of it for you. So we'll go back to the query panel right here with the old edit, one of several ways, as you know. And what I'm allowed to do is I can select month and I can reclassify it as I can do all of them, okay? Now, as you work with this, you would have caught that up front. I did it on purpose so you see it and go, whoa, but you would have realized some of those dim dimensions really are some of them should have been made dimensions when they weren't. Now, in case somebody asked this question, they said, well, why can't we do that with universe objects? Because we can't, it doesn't allow us, only for the Excel file, personal files for that. I'll rerun, let's go rename, by the way. I like to do renames on these. We'll just very quickly rename it Excel. EXC, I want it to look halfway decent in here. Come on, EXCEL. And if I had more than one Excel, obviously, I'd come up with a little better naming convention for those as well. And we'll rerun the query. Now my Excel file is good to go. And there it is, quarters one, two, three, four. Months projected revenue are good to go. Remember that Excel file, I can have other Excel files I can add in as well, do other kinds of things with it as well. So now, here's the, the kicker. Someone decides to update it. And literally, when I first when I first tested the 4.1 release of this, I'll never forget when I got a hold of Samuel. And I, and I told him, I said, you know, I can't update, you gave us Excel file capability, how do we update it? And he said, what do you mean? You're not gonna update your Excel files. I said, Samuel, we got a problem. He said, oh, people wanna update the Excel files? Yes, so they put a prompt patch in for that one, by the way, it was necessary. They did not realize what a, what, what a showstopper. That and grouping were the two big things that were huge huge along the way. So now how do I update it? What did I say in the beginning? You create the file external and we import it. I update the file external, same name or different name, because I can remap later on if I want. Be careful about that. But I don't do an import, I do what's called an or, uh, organized replace. Now when I show it to you, don't blame me, I'm the messenger. I had no idea where they came up with this concept of how to do it. And by the way, all the stuff we're gonna go through in the manual process of updating, before someone asks that little question is, no, you cannot schedule it. That was my trick. Well, if I just schedule all my updates and it'll, it'll do the organized replace and take care of it. Unfortunately, not yet. I'm working with Samuel. I don't know if he'll ever do it. So let's play the little game. Let's go outside. Let me just go to browse. Right here. And I have out on my computer, and I have a, an actual thumb drive. And it's got a file out here called, uh, it's in the B-O-U-G, well, it should be right out here, efashion.xls. Where's my, right here, there it is, efashion.xlsx. So there's interesting scenarios I've run into with this. I started with XLS files, all right, and used them and it worked fine, then I would do an organized replace, and every now and then I'd get a pop-up format error. It had a format issue trying to, to, to react between the new and the old. So to get around it, what I found was if I just use xlsx 100% of the time, the problem disappeared. You may never have it, with it, but I would recommend stay with the xlsx side, it was much cleaner for us all the way around. So let's open up that external file. You might want to develop a little guide, put some help in there to, so you know where you've stored that file that's tied back to your Webby document as you go out. So we're gonna open it up. Yeah. Oh, that must not be the one I used. Let me make sure I got the other one in here. Uh, the one I usually use is in my BOUG implementation. I have it in here. I had walked through it earlier. I know where it is. It's on my uh, documents right out here. I just used it ye yesterday in the one class, in the one or a couple days ago when I was doing a demo on it. 
this is why you have to be so careful um, where the file is located. Out here, eFashion.xlsx, view YouTube presentations. I should have an Excel file. Ready. I just want to find any one of them that I can use. So I bounce it around all the time for that one. Now let's do the uh, eFashion files. No, that's not the one I want. Let's make sure I've got it out there. I had it all set up to go for it. And it should be the one right. Let me go on the C drive on this drive here. Let's see where I've got it built in. Amazing how it disappears on you, right? I'll go to VO Class folder. I have one in there. I have one in uh, user docs. And here's an efashion.xlsx file there. We'll open that one. Hopefully that will be compatible. And this one has quarter, month, and projected revenue. There's my source. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to update it. Now, when you work with Excel files, you have to look at things from the perspective of two different types of updates. This is what gets you in trouble. Update number one, I just changed the data. I had more rows of data. Some of the specific values maybe for the existing quarter and months got changed, so some of the projected revenue might have been updated. And I added more rows of data. Maybe I did change and deleted some of the rows of data. But the point is I did nothing in the way of any physical structural change at all, nothing, okay? So what I'm going to do is add a new column. Oh, that's going to really throw a monkey wrench into the words in that right there. So we'll go over to this next column, which is, uh, here's my projected revenue. This is sales revenue. And just for simplicity's sake, very quickly, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, one, zero, and one, one, and one, two. We'll put some data in there to go along with it. And now I physically have updated the Excel file. And we'll close it. I'll do the save when it comes in and ask me for it. For that Excel file. And now the Excel file has been changed, all right? So now what do I do? I said, well, I'm done out here. Okay. I come back into here, and by the way, you can have the report open as you, but for the Excel file, you're just in the process of updating. So the problem I have here now is the, the source file is now changed, but I haven't brought the change in. So we have to, re how, do, how do we have to replace it? The way we do that is go back to the Documents tab out here. You find the original source, because even this version is now out of date. This one here that we used to bring in to create our query from uh, has the, the older version. We haven't updated yet. So let's go to the Excel file here. Make sure we've highlighted the specific one. And you do what's called the right, right side organize replace files. Now, if anybody can tell me where they dreamed that up, I would love a good reason for it. How in the world did they come up with that? Why don't we just re-import it? Make it easy. We'll do a replace file. we got to browse. Now, this allows you to point to a different file which could spell trouble if you're not careful as well. So you have to be careful when you're doing this to make sure. We'll go back, and that was in the uh, BO class folder. Where, let me extend this out a little bit. Get to my BO class. I had stuck it in there. Uh, on the C drive, I had the BO class folder. That's where it is. I keep moving around. I shouldn't do it that way. See what happens when you do that? And there's the uh, efashion.xls. Uh, that where is it? update. Everybody see it? Here it is right on top. That's the one I just updated right there. Okay. Oh, all right, so it's not going to let me for this case. So what's what we'll, you'll see here is uh, there was a format issue with it, so it, it didn't bring it in for that one. So I picked the wrong one for that one. But that's what would have brought it all in. Let me, for time's sake then, let me do this uh, since I won't have enough time. What you would now do is go back to your document at this point, and it's brought the data in. You would go back to the query panel at this point. And what you're going to want to do is go to Edit Settings and bring up the settings. And then when you do an OK on it, it will then come back and it will reflect it. It will pick up the physical 